Hello friends, welcome. Let's uh, study the test methodology for checking out uh, the calcium level in the serum or even if it's uh, urine. So it's basically a test methodology for calcium. Now calcium as we know is a very important ion in the development of the bones. It's a very important ion for the development for the heart function, uh, for the teeth formation and then it, uh, it plays an important role in the, uh, in the muscular function, right? And, uh, and also in the clotting of blood. So understand that around 1 to 2 percent of the calcium is only present in the blood, whereas the remaining 98 to 99 percent of the calcium is stored as the teeth or as the bones. So the body uh, would withdraw or would uh, take uh, the calcium which is needful from the teeth uh, or mostly from the bones right uh, so that is important to maintain the normal serum calcium levels okay so most of the calcium that is uh, uh, excreted from the body is lost in the stool whereas around 98 99 percent is uh, filtered by the kidneys and it is reabsorbed so when there is increased level of calcium present in the urine, this is because of elevated serum calcium levels. So this happens because of, of, of certain uh, disorders. So we will look into the kinds of disorders which lead to increased levels of serum calcium. So uh, urine calcium is used primarily to evaluate parathyroid function and effects of vitamin D. Okay, the, uh, the importance of measuring calcium is, uh, is, is used in the diagnosis and treatment of diseases of the parathyroid hormone, then varieties of bone diseases, uh, as well as renal diseases, then a condition called as tetany, where it uh, causes uh, because of the muscle spasms, then yeah, tetany is muscular contraction or spasms. The calcium levels in the body is regulated by three kinds of hormones such as the parathyroid hormone, the vitamin D and calcitonin. So we look into the parathyroid hormone. So less amount or decrease amount, uh, levels of calcium in the serum will stimulate the release of parathyroid hormone from the parathyroid gland, okay, from the PTH gland. So uh, vice versa, if there is an increase in calcium levels, the PT, PTH uh, secretion will be stopped. Then in even the bones, PTH will activate osteoblasts and this will break down the uh, or will cause erosion of the bones and therefore increase the serum calcium levels. So in the bones, PTH will act on the osteoblast cells. And in the kidneys also, uh, they have an important function because in the kidneys uh, the tubular reabsorption of calcium is increased and uh, another property of PTH is that the hydroxylation of vitamin D to its active form is happening in the kidneys. So the next hormone that we saw is the vitamin D or the cholecalciferol. So this is obtained from diet or by exposure to sunlight. So it is from diet or exposure to sunlight. So it is in the kidneys that the active form of vitamin D is, uh, is obtained. How? The vitamin D is activated to 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol, okay? So this is the active form of vitamin D. So this conversion happens in the kidneys. Then uh, vitamin D helps in absorption of calcium by intestine. So this is the role of vitamin D or also, also known as cholecalciferol. The next hormone is calcitonin. So calcitonin is, is released by parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland. So it is the thyroid gland, the parathyroid, uh, parafollicular cells of thyroid glands which will secrete calcitonin. So, uh, so this happens when the serum calcium level increases. So it is acting as an antagonist hormone, which means that when increased levels of um, calcium is present, calcitonin will be um, secreted by the parafollicular cells 
and then this will act on vitamin D. So it will inhibit vitamin D and parathyroid hormone activities to decrease the serum calcium levels. So this is how the homeostasis or the balance of uh, calcium levels is, is done in the body by the three hormones. Okay, let's look into the clinical significance. So there are two ways in which calcium uh, is significantly uh, affecting the body. In one case, it is a hypercalcemia effect and the other case, it is a hypocalcemia effect. So in the hypercalcemia effect, we can see that uh, the, the parathyroid hormones are, uh, uh, are affected and uh, the parathyroid glands, so it, is, it could be a, a carcinoma condition, a cancerous condition of the parathyroid hormone such as parathyroid adenoma or, um, uh, or another kind of malignancy. So, it could be either the primary stage or the secondary stage. Now, this could also lead to a kidney failure stage, okay, because increased levels of calcium would lead to the formation of kidney stones and uh, excess kidney stones, if uh, untreated or if it is uh, affecting the kidneys very badly, it could result in a kidney failure. The second kind of uh, uh, stage or the second kind of effect of calcium is a hypocalcemia so in which uh, it would cause a primary hyperphosphatemia or it could alter the vitamin d metabolism or even cause hypoparathyroidism let's look at a few tests that would, uh, would that would check the levels of calcium so we have atomic absorption then we have an ion selective electrode method and then we have uh, uh, tests based on reagents in which orthocrisolphthalein complexon uh, reagent is used and another test is using arsinazo method. So basically these three tests are commonly uh, used in the labs um, to find out uh, the calcium levels. So we will talk about the reagent based test. So in arsinazo method, uh, the calcium ions will react with arsinazo to form an intense purple colored complex. So this is the reagent arsinazo which is present will react with the calcium ions. So the purple colored complex uh, intensity will be directly proportional to the amount of calcium ions present in the serum. So let's look at what is arsinazo. It's actually a very uh, long, it's got a very uh, quite a long name. So we will, I'll read it out slowly. It is 2218 dihydroxy 36 disulfonaphthalene 27 bis azo bis benzene bis benzene are sonic acid so i'll go through the name once again arsinazo reagent or arsinazo 3 reagent is 22118 dihydroxy 36 disulfonaphthalene 27 bis azo bis benzene are sonic acid okay so it is a bichromatical but we can measure it bichromatically by calorimetric method and the wavelength that is used is around 660 to 700 nanometers so the reference range or the expected values of serum calcium would be between 8.6 to 10.3 milligram per deciliter and the urine values would be between 100 to 300 milligram per deciliter so this values would uh, would be varying uh, with uh, factors such as uh, the sex of the individual the age the diet etc the other kind of reagent based method is orthocrisophthalein complexon so in this the uh, the calcium ions which is present in the serum or the urine will react with a reagent called as orthocrisophthalein complexon and it is in an alkaline pH a pH of around 10.6 so this forms an intense violet colored complex and it can be measured at 577 nanometers. So in the orthochrysophthalene uh, method, the reagent that is used is orthochrysophthalene complexon reagent. Calcium ions present in the serum or the urine will react with this reagent to form a purple, intense purple colored complex. This has to be in, within an alkaline pH of 10.6 and it is measured at 577 nanometers 
So uh, again, the resulting intensity of, of the purple color will depend upon the concentration of ions uh, present in the serum or urine. Expected values in this case, in this for this reagent test is serum levels would be between 8.6 to 10.2 milligram of calcium per deciliter and in the urine the values of calcium would be between 100 to 300 milligram per uh, deciliter. Thank you.